This is the Apple M4 MacBook Air. The MacBook Air has always been the laptop that most people associate with portability, ease of use and great looks, all without compromising on speed or functionality. I've personally enjoyed using the base models of the M1 MacBook Air and the M2 MacBook Air as well. They generally provided pretty much everything I needed without any of the usual expensive upgrades. In this video, I'm taking you through practical everyday scenarios to help you decide if the base model is generally enough for you or if those pricey upgrades that Apple loves to push us so much are actually necessary at this time. I've used the M2 MacBook Air, for example, to run this entire channel when I was on holiday a couple of years ago. Now, Apple's latest refresh with the M4 chip promised an even more insane performance, all wrapped in a beautiful, fanless design. And I gotta admit, on paper, it looks fantastic. We are getting, though, pretty much the same laptop as previous years. <laughs> sure, we're getting fairly slim bezel still, and they could be slimmer, if I'm honest. We also have a much needed upgraded camera at the top here, in case you use that, because the previous one was like a 1080p, I think, FaceTime camera. This one, at least, unlike the previous M2 and M3 models, now supports center stage and desk view as well. They haven't even improved the brightness of the displays. It's literally the same as the M2 and M3 versions. The keyboard is the same even, same number of ports as well, though there are now two Thunderbolt 4 ports on the M4. In short, we could say, why change any of the design, right? It's something that works really well, and Apple, from a design perspective, has maintained this signature, you know, very slim, very light, excellent for portability. It still feels as refined as the original MacBook Air, it's still pretty revolutionary, really, in this space. But the design itself, unless you really want this new sky blue, is not why you would go for the M4. Most of the upgrades are internal components, and to be fair to Apple, they are significant, like faster memory bandwidth and more RAM at the base model. It's certainly what I would call an evolution rather than a revolution. Perhaps we'll see something a little bit braver uh, with the M5 chip coming soon, maybe next year in 2026. But these refinements, even though they are small and internal, still improve everyday usability. And practically speaking, if it ain't broke, why fix it? I've stuck with the base model again believing it will suffice for my needs, but have I made a mistake this time? Look, at face value, I think, yes, it certainly looks like a mistake that I made here because I chose the base model with 16 gig of RAM and only 256 gig of storage. That feels, even as I'm saying this to you, feels like a mistake. On memory, I've chosen the right one, I think, you know, because 16 gig, as I've shown in so many videos here, is plenty for a lot of workflows, including some pro workflows. But the storage in the long run, it may be something that I will regret. In fact, I'm already regretting, I think. And talking about upgrades, there's a smarter way of doing these things as well. When choosing a MacBook, Apple is notoriously good at tempting us buyers with upgrades that we might never need. But if you genuinely need those extra resources, there is a smarter way to buy, and that's using today's sponsor, Upgraded. Upgraded allows you to avoid Apple's steep upfront costs by financing your new MacBook Air from as low as just over $33 per month as 0% APR. And unlike competitors, Upgraded lets you spread the payments comfortably over 36 months, not just 12, and gives you an option to upgrade every 24 months. That really is perfect if you always want the latest tech, like this M4 MacBook Air here, without constantly shelling out thousands. And what is great is that Upgraded offer custom specs that aren't always available at big box stores like Best Buy and even Amazon. At least for me, when I'm looking for higher memory or higher storage configurations on things like Amazon or Best Buy, I always find that they don't always stock every single spec, which end up limiting your choices. Additionally, there's no hassle of trying to resell your old MacBook on Facebook Marketplace or dealing with you know, scams and exorbitant fees as well on eBay. Upgraded sends you a convenient box to return your device securely, giving it an FBI-grade data wipe and refurbishing it responsibly. Good for you, good for the planet, good for your security as well. They're trusted and backed by notable investors as well, like Greg Brockman, president of OpenAI, and startup accelerator Y Combinator. And they're flexing a stellar 4.8 stars on Trustpilot from, clearly, a lot of satisfied customers. Financing is handled through a firm, a very trusted lender that won't surprise you with late fees or even impact your credit score with hard checks. And here's a quick tip for you as well. The money that you save up front could be earning around 4% interest in a high-yield savings account, money you would have otherwise lost if you paid up front. 
And even better for all my viewers, they are offering you an extra $40 discount using the code AGT40. Check them out using the link below or scan the QR code here and make a MacBook purchase smarter this time and more sustainable as well. And thank you so much Upgraded for sponsoring this video. Even though the M4 MacBook Air is passively cooled, meaning there are no fans inside, it comfortably handles demanding tasks. Running this pretty heavy Blender file here of a detailed model took some time, of course, as expected, but impressively, as you can see here, I was still able to multitask even during that 3D render. Right, I've got to pause for a moment here because this is one of those moments in my reviews, and I've seen this before with this little guy here, the Mac Mini. You kind of know just by using it on a daily basis that the device is fast and is, you know, it performs really well, but it's not only until you really go ridiculous, you push it to, to the level that you wouldn't normally do to really be like, you know, <laughs> right now in awe of the power of this machine. Uh, to give you an idea, all the cores, I've got the 10 cores here, obviously there's um, six efficiency cores and four performance cores, and they are maxed out. The thing is, I've used this blender, this exact model uh, on my M1 Max MacBook Pro, on the Mac Mini, both the base model and the M4 Pro Mac Mini as well with 24 gig of RAM. What I'm seeing here is that it's actually performing a similar level as the M1 Max MacBook Pro, which is like two hours to render this model, it's that heavy, but also the same as the M4 Pro chip, you know, with you know a 24 gig of RAM. It's remarkable really for for this, which has no ventilation. It does get a little bit warm, but, and I'll, I'll measure the temperature here, it's nothing like, you know, I can feel it, it's not worrying. It doesn't feel like it's throttling either. I mean, it's absolutely chugging along, no problem. Not only that, you know, I'd be impressed if that was it, but I'm actually editing a video at the same time, a 4K 60 video. Okay, it's just a couple of layers of 4K, but still, it it's just chugging along. I'm not seeing any performance issue at all. I can color grade it. It's actually a pretty decent uh, video file as well, as in hefty. And about 20, 30 tabs in Chrome and Safari open as well. It's unbelievable that I can do all of this stuff and still be exporting this huge Blender file. And you can see here, right, it's, um, I'm just showing you here the, the GPU utilization. And you can see every now and then it goes through these big spikes, but then it chugs along. And here, this green part here is the efficiency cores. Usually, it, it, it's mostly black because it's not fully utilized. The more green you see here, it means it's really being pushed. But honestly, I haven't seen any de degradation uh, so far. It's been rendering this 3D model for about, I don't know, half an hour now. I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of, this is insane. And this is the cheapest model as well. It's not even the, uh, the expensive one. Incredible. Really outperforming my expectations for a device without any active cooling. As I do every year, I'll be doing a day in the life type video as a graphic designer or as a student as well. But here's a snippet of what's coming. Whether I was exporting internally or to an external SSD, this laptop clearly is punching above its weight and it feels entirely suitable for most creative workflows, proving that expensive processor upgrades are often unnecessary. Another example here, we can look at the activity monitor, which clearly is showing here that memory pressure sometimes go into the orange and ROM usage starts to use, you know, uh, swap file and things like that, but it's still green most of the time, despite all the active tabs and apps open. And ROM upgrades are another tempting app sell from Apple is very, you know, they make it so easy for you to add another $100, $200 to your purchase just by saying, you know, have 24 gig or 32 gig. In my tests here, which is not really a kind of a pro like workflow, right? In a lot of the cases that I'm using the MacBook Air for is for everyday usage, but still very heavy though, with 30 or 40 tabs open across Chrome and Safari, so multiple browsers, plus productivity stuff, you know, and creativity apps as well, like Photoshop, Lightroom in the background. The 16 gig model, even with all of this stuff going on at the same time, is coping remarkably well. Could talk about swap files until the cows come home and things like that, but to cut a long story short, memory pressure stays comfortably in the green most of the time, indicating that most users, in this examples that I'm showing here, genuinely don't need any more. But I totally appreciate that you might have a, a heavier use case. So if you frequently multitask at extreme levels, maybe 60 tabs, 70 tabs, or perhaps you run like, you know, virtual machines and development tasks all at the same time, 
moving up to 24 gig of RAM, I think will benefit your workflow a little bit better. Now for everyone else, even though I'd love to say that I'm a, I'm a pro user and I need this stuff, 16 gig is plenty as I've been able to show you here today. Now, storage is another area that Apple, again, charges a premium for. I refuse to give money to Apple for storage unless I absolutely have to. The reality is, you know, after accounting for Mac OS itself, the base model 256 gig drive is a joke even to say that. <laughs> it, that's the default, right? It's not enough really. And it leaves about 215 gig free, which is just about adequate for general browsing, you know, but if you're really, you know, if you're gonna use this properly, like, you know, Logic Pro, Photoshop, Final Cut Pro, some of these apps are gonna take a lot of space and over time, you're gonna run out of storage. So personally, if you've seen this channel, you've seen me recommend this several times, but I'd strongly recommend external storage if you can. Using a high-speed external solution like the Lexar 4 terabytes uh, NVMe SSD drive in an Acasis enclosure like this one here, gives you about the same speed as the internal storage. Sadly, this is a Thunderbolt 5 uh, enclosure, which for you is future-proofing, but the MacBook Air is still on Thunderbolt 4. But it is compatible with this, and this flexibility at a fraction of Apple's prices, you can't really beat that. I'll leave links in the description below if you wanna grab one of those as well. But if you must have more internal storage, either for convenience or for whatever reason that you might need it, consider the 512 gig upgrade instead of the one terabyte because my rationale is never recommend the one terabyte or even two terabyte in some cases, simply because as we just discussed, there are better options out there from a price perspective. I just can't hand in heart say, get the one terabyte if you need it, because once you start kind of exporting videos and heavy files or whatever it is you know, that needs a one terabyte, one terabyte is actually not a lot of data anyway. So you're gonna run out of that one terabyte too, if you, if you are actually heavily using it. But if you do just want that comfort of not having to faff carrying an extra bit of kit with you, then at least use something like upgraded instead of forking out that much money to Apple. So yeah, just be cautious really is the message. Going higher on memory, storage, or cores quickly places you in you know, that MacBook Pro territory. You can often find excellent deals on M2 or even M3 MacBook Pros with significantly more powerful CPUs and better cooling. Well, cooling, <laughs> offering more bang for your buck really. It's like the Mac Mini case as well in a way. There are awesome value machines, but the minute you start upgrading it, you may as well get an older model um, M2 Mac Studio. Now, which screen size should you go for? The choice between the 13 and 15 inch models comes down to your daily usage. The 15 inch offers substantial screen real estate, of course. It's perfect if the air is your primary machine for those prolonged productivity sessions, photo editing, multitasking. But if you're regularly just hooking up to an external monitor at your desk, or frequently traveling, for example, commuting, the more compact 13 inch is gonna be way easier to handle and pack away. And more importantly, as I'm <laughs> showing you here, it's lighter and comfortably fits into small bags and spaces like, you know, train trays and small tables. It's an ideal travel companion. Now, ultimately, Apple's M4 MacBook Air in its base form is impressively capable, as I've shown you here today, for the vast majority of users, including myself. Skipping Apple's expensive upgrades is typically the wiser financial choice, not just on MacBooks, to be honest, on iPhones and tablets as well. Invest in smart external solutions where you can. Consider flexible options to buy as well, like the financing from Upgraded, if those upgrades that you need become necessary. Overall, the M4 MacBook Air is a fantastic laptop that delivers impressive performance fantastic value really. It really is hard to beat Apple on, on Macs at all. Not just the MacBook Air, but the MacBook Pro and the Mac Minis as well. Easy from a portability perspective and everyday scenario as well, making it an excellent choice for most of us. At the end of the day, choosing smart upgrades or alternatives wisely helps you get the most from your investment, which is exactly what I always recommend in this channel here. And I'm sorry, Apple, but yeah, I gotta help, <laughs> gotta help my viewers. If you enjoy this content, don't forget to subscribe and check out my other MacBook and Mac Mini videos as well. Stay tuned for that day in the life video that I'm gonna bring is always a good one because I take a lot of feedback from you as well, from your comments here and make those into a video to show you exactly uh, how these machines can be put to use. Thank you so much for watching. Cheers.